Good afternoon, everyone, again. Thank you for joining us from any corner of the world. Thanks to the possibility of this Zero Conferences um, opportunity uh, to broadcast all live. So even those who could not join us in person here at the UN headquarters in Vienna could not lose any of the in sessions, but also the very interesting topics and discussions that we are having at our fireside chat station. My name is Emanuela Zaimi and I'm the founder and uh, managing director of Down Syndrome Albania Foundation. And I have the pleasure to be moderating the next 15 minutes and talk to our guest, Mr. Carlos Pereira from Livox. And he's joining us from Brazil. Mr. Pereira, are you with us? And am I pronouncing correctly your surname and name, please? <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Uh, my name is Carlos Pereira, and thank you for having me. Just the only thing, uh, I'm Brazilian, but currently I'm living in the United States. That's great. Uh, but I am sure you miss Brazil and you travel a lot. Uh, sometimes, uh, because, because of the pandemic, not so much as before, but sometimes, yes. Yeah, but the UK is all open now, no? And Brazil isn't? Uh, Brazil is mostly open and also here in the US, depending on the states, um, they're open as well. Uh, but there are some restrictions still in place. Um, so I'd rather just... <laughs> I hope ground. everything yeah. will be over and I, because this is the reason why we are not also together maybe today here in person. Yeah. Um, we are going to discuss together today the challenges of going international. So being with with a mission, being with a, um, um, with a social business, uh, the world requires solutions that most probably can be uh, replicated. And um, we also want that, that to happen, but we always have some challenges. Um, Shall we start with discussing the, the details into this topic, but um, concerning the inter internationalization? So like the culture, the language, would you set the ground for us, please? Okay, sure. Uh, I guess one of the first things that you need to care about is actually to check if your product is um, available in the language that you want to address the situation. Um, Actually, I'm the CEO and founder of Livox. Livox is an alternative communication software. So uh, it helps people that are non-verbal to speak. So people with cerebral palsy, autism, and etc. cetera. Um, and because of that, language is very important for Livox. So uh, if a person lives in, in Vienna, in Austria, uh, Livox needs to be available in German. Uh, so that's very important for us to focus uh, and try to localize the software depending on the location. So we did a lot of work to localize Livox to the markets that uh, we are trying to work with. And congratulations to your solution. Um, I, I, as a parent of a child with Down syndrome myself, uh, I am into many, you know, these uh, parents, community groups, Facebook groups everywhere. And um, once in one of them, it was, um, it, w it was a question to all parents, if, if there would be something that you would like to be different, I mean, despite any type of, of, of disability in, in, in that child, what would that be? And everybody agreed that um, the main thing that they would love, especially on those children that were not able to communicate, was to hear them speak and um, to hear them uh, call them parents and uh, mom and dad. So um, your product, uh, it's, it's really, really, um, it needs support, let's say, to go international, right? Uh, so you have it in which languages right now? Well, the Vox is available in Portuguese, uh -huh. Spanish, English, uh, and thanks to the efforts of our friends in, oh, Arabic as well. Wow. And thanks to the efforts of our friends in um, Zero Project, it's available in German. And we just made a partnership with um, health insurance in Switzerland. It's a health insurance called Sanitas. Uh, and, um, and they helped us to translate Livox into Italian and French as well. So when you say people are helping you, it's just, just 
uh, going and translate uh, something there or it needs a considerable investment. And um, here we can maybe jump to the next question. What are the challenges to finding a business model that works for a different market, for another market? Yeah, that's a very good question because for example, in Brazil, I'm Brazilian, and uh, in Brazil we focus on um, government sales, okay? Why? Because uh, Livox is a platform that works on Android tablets. Uh, and although Android tablets are affordable, uh, they're still very expensive for many people in Brazil. And we want to reach the bottom of the pyramid. So that's why we partner with local governments so they can buy uh, uh, Livox licenses and they also um, tablets to deliver to these people in schools. Uh, but this is the model for Brazil. But we also sell, sell Livox for families and for institutions in Brazil. But uh, in other countries, it's different. For example, uh, in Austria and also in the US, um, most of the people with disabilities, they already have uh, an alternative communication device. Uh, and usually when we, do a, we make a sale in Brazil, um, usually we go to a school district and we try to reach all the people with disabilities because most of them, they, they don't have anything. They don't have anything. So we come, we go to school and we say, we have a solution for all your kids with disabilities. And, and sometimes they buy for all the kids. But the school example, itself, the US, you mean? The school itself, itself buy for the kids, right? Exactly. We try to talk to um, departments of education. So uh, depending on the city, they have a department of education and they buy Livox for the whole school system of that particular city. Uh, so it depends on the size of the city. Some cities are bigger, some are smaller. The biggest city that we sell Livox, uh, they bought 5,000 licenses for all the kids with disabilities. Um, and so it depends a lot. But in Brazil, it, this is the situation in Brazil. These kids, they don't have anything and they try to blanket to cover the whole school district with Livox. But for example, when you go to Austria, when you go to uh, United States, these kids, they already have uh, alternative communication devices. Yeah. Yeah, if um, you would come to Albania, if we, if we would work together in a partnership, the, the only thing awesome. that, I mean, we have in our laws, if I'm not wrong, uh, that we should provide assistive uh, alternative communication technologies to, to children um, uh, with disabilities. But in our country, things are on paper, but in practice, it's very hard. So if you would come and you would work, uh, we would try to find a solution uh, with us. It would be just going to some business donors or some other donors and, you know, helping. It's, it, it would not be a sustainable um, business model. So I am afraid and now I understand why it's very challenging. Uh, while you have a mission there, but also you need to, uh, to, to, to sell this as a product, as a social business, um, the policy making and, and the situations different in each country create a barrier. Um, but is also a barrier to find partners that can help on the way? Is it, exactly. I mean, we, we have, we are, I mean, Zero provides a very strong uh, network. Um, but is it um, still a challenge for you to, to have some help in internationalizing your, uh, your solution? It, it depends. Uh, for example, the Zero, Zero Project helped us a lot with um, finding partners that can help us uh, in Austria. But depend, it depends a lot on each country. For example, uh, our best case scenario is when we find a partner that can also be a distributor. Mm -hmm. So this partner, that's exactly what happened in the Middle East. Uh, this partner in the Middle East, he sells um, uh, solutions for schools in the Middle East. And so he was able to translate Livox into Arabic uh, and sell Livox, you know, to the Middle East. So they get a commission for that. So this is the best like case agents. scenario because, I, yeah, exactly. And I, I don't speak Arabic, for example. So mm -hmm. this is the best case scenario because they can, they, they think as locals, they understand the language, the culture and everything. And so this helps a lot. So talking about business models also, uh, many solutions, uh, they have a standard price and that's it. You know, it doesn't, they don't, don't care if the price is too high or too low, mm -hmm. uh, depending on different countries. But we developed a very sophisticated uh, spreadsheet 
uh, with fully vox pricing. So you have a baseline price, okay? Uh, and um, we take into consideration two things. First, GDP. Uh, GDP is the amount of, you know... Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, it shows the development is, of the crown. Yes? Yeah, yeah the, the amount of, of wealth of a country. And the second one, the HDI, is the Human Development Index. Why are we taking into consideration these two things? Because, for example, Brazil has a high GDP, but the Human Development Index is very low. Yeah. So we take into consideration this to say, hey, what is a fair price for this market? Because if we look only at the GDP, people in Brazil wouldn't be able to afford Livox. So we have different prices depending on different locations. Uh, and these are, these are, how can I say, um, uh, suggestion of pricing for this country. So we, when we go, for example, for Sudan, we were able to implement Livox in Sudan uh, in a few schools. Uh, obviously, it was much more affordable than uh, for Europe and for Brazil. Uh, and, um, and so this is not just about the money for us. This is about making people with disabilities, uh, empower people, empower people with disabilities. But is this a product that um, families could uh, also um, afford to buy themselves or? It is, it is. And that's the whole point. Uh, we have different uh, price points and models as well. So for example, if I'm talking to a school, uh, usually we have a um, um, one-time fee because these schools, they don't want to pay every, they don't want to pay for it every single month, right? They want to pay for it and, and that's it. Uh, but for parents and for families, we try to have um, a monthly fee or something like that. So it depends a lot on, and, and of, obviously for people with disabilities, it's much, much more affordable than for uh, parents, of course. What is your current um call to action that you'd like uh, everybody to, to hear to those who are with us today and that will also watch later because everything will be staying online. I mean, related to yeah. Livox, to your product, but also um, anything else that concerns um, challenges of going international. Yeah, well, actually my call to action is not only related to going international, but uh, it's related to people with disabilities as um, as a group. Uh, when you think about people with disabilities, I was I was uh, able to raise some money and I opened a rehab center in my hometown in Brazil, uh, and I was working with a lot of people with disabilities. And then happily, I saw that many people they spent more money with their pets than with their father that had a stroke. And this is true in many situations. So. <clears throat> This is very sad. Um, and my call to action is to change this. If we empower these people, you know, so they can uh, be able to communicate by themselves, if they can, uh, if they're able to have a proper education, um, that, that's the least that we can do, right? And uh, it's interesting because sometimes people don't understand that unless they, they are touched by a disability in their families. So don't wait for this to happen, you know? Uh, if you have the means to help, help people with disabilities, do that because they desperately need uh, some help. Thank you very much, Mr. Pereira. And it was a real pleasure to have you here with us today. And hopefully we will have you physically here in Vienna uh, and discuss further and see how also Livox have uh, reached my, many more people with disabilities that are in need of your product. Thank you so much. My pleasure. You guys can always count on me. Thank you. Thank you. Dear uh, followers of this Fireside Chat Talk, thank you for being in us. Stay tuned because we end up at 5.20 uh, this afternoon. So we still have some other sessions to go together. <laughs>